In this lesson, we're going to look at DNA fingerprints and how Maury on The Maury Show actually determines paternity. So as a review, remember, restriction enzymes cut DNA into pieces. And then when we're talking about inheritance, your DNA is a combination of your parents. You got half of it from mom and half of it from dad. So when we're trying to identify people using DNA, like in, on CSI or um, The Maury Show, when we're trying to identify people, we're going to use what's called a DNA fingerprint. And this is making a unique picture of your DNA. And we call it a fingerprint not because it has anything to do with actual fingerprints, but simply because like a fingerprint, it is unique to a particular person, and it can be used to identify them. Now, we're going to make a DNA fingerprint with this fancy uh, process called gel electrophoresis. And that's a big word to basically say we're going to use electricity to separate DNA fragments based on size. So we're going to have DNA go through a gel using electricity. And then they're going to separate out based on their size. So let's look at the steps of gel electrophoresis. First thing i got to do is actually create fragments of DNA. And so I'm going to use a restriction enzyme because that's what they do. They cut up DNA. So here I have my DNA, and I'm going to use my restriction enzyme, and I'm going to cut it into a number of fragments. And notice that these fragments are of different sizes. How many and of how large your fragments are is unique to every person, and this is going to be key to how we're going to make this DNA fingerprint. So before we look at the next step, which goes through a briar patch faster, this rabbit or the dog? Well, the answer is fairly clearly the rabbit. And the reason for that is because the rabbit is so much smaller. And so when we're talking about sort of like a maze type situation, the rabbit is going to be able to weave his way in and out of the briars much quicker than the dog is. And so he's going to get farther, faster than the dog will. So keep that in mind. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make our DNA go through a gel and this gel is very much like a briar patch. And so the DNA fragments are actually kind of being forced to weave their way through this gel. And what that means is that the smaller fragments are going to move faster than the bigger ones. All right, so the smaller fragments, because they're able to move through the gel quicker, are going to move faster and therefore farther than the larger ones. So here I have a gel, and I'm going to put my DNA in these uh, boxes, which are called wells. All right, and then I'm going to use an electric current to actually pull the DNA through this gel and create a DNA fingerprint, which looks something like this. Now, each one of these lines is called a band. And you'll notice some of the bands are a little bit thicker than others. Um, and basically, that just means there's more DNA of that size than of the other sizes. So we're not going to really worry too much about the size of the bands, just their location. All right, so each one of these bands represents a different size DNA fragment. And remember what we said was the larger it is, the slower it's going to move through this gel. So the largest fragment is going to be this one right here. And again, just because the band's bigger doesn't mean that that indicates a larger fragment. But the fact that it has not moved very far does. Now the smallest fragment is going to be this one at the bottom because it has been able to move the fastest through the briar patch like gel and therefore it is the smallest. So the last thing we got to really figure out is how do I actually read a DNA fingerprint and use it? What you're going to do is actually just match up bands. 
And when we're talking about paternity, or looking at who the parents are, what you got to remember is that all of the child's DNA comes from mom or dad, which means each one of those bands, each one of those fragments, has to be from either mom or dad. So let's look at how that works. Here we have a child, and then who we are claiming are their mom and dad. So here's the dad's DNA fingerprint, here's the mom's DNA fingerprint, and here's the child's. So what we're saying is, if these are in fact the mom and dad, every one of these bands in the child's DNA fingerprint will either be found in mom's fingerprint or dad's fingerprint. So let's see if that's true. Let's start with the ones in mom. Okay, that one matches up, as do those three. So four of the bands are found in mom, which means... That if this is the dad, the remaining four have to be found in his, and indeed they are. And so we can see this child um, was born to this mom and this dad, because all the DNA uh, bands match up. Now let's look at this where there's a number of different couples involved, and we got to figure out which one is the parents of this baby. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's break it down couple by couple. Okay, so couple A. Let's look at the first band that this baby has. Because remember, each one of these baby bands has to be found in either the mom or the dad. Well, in couple A, neither of the parents has this band, which means they cannot be the parents. All right, let's look at couple B. Okay, this band is found in one of the parents. So is this one, so is this one, this one, this one, and this one. So for right now, we're saying, yep, couple B could definitely be the parents of this baby. But let's just make sure that couple C and couple D are also um, don't match up. Well, all we really have to do is go down to this second to last band. And what do you notice? Not a single person in couple C or couple D has that band, meaning they cannot be the parents, and only couple B could be the parents of this baby.